Hi, how's it going? Happy New Year to you. I uh, hope you had a nice Christmas break. We had a very quiet one here, which was great because that gave me the opportunity to come into the shed and get to work <laughs> on some of my numerous projects. Uh, that's what we're looking at today. I'm continuing my painting of my 28mm fantasy figures. In fact, we're Innsmouth bound because today I'm going to be painting up some deep ones. Before we get into that though, if you watched my last upload, you'll remember that I made a pair of wet palettes. And I was going to leave these for a day before I checked, but you know, plans never survive contact with the enemy or the family come to that. So it's actually been two days since I made these. So I'm just going to open these up and we'll see how the paint is doing inside. So let's start with our blue one. Oh, the, colour, the colours run a bit there where I tilted. Um, looks like the paint has separated a little bit, but as you can see, that's still still very wet, still certainly very use, usable. does look like it's separated into blue and white there a touch, but that's certainly still usable. I think I mixed a bit of red in with that one as well, that's why it's gone a bit violet. Let's look at the other one. Yeah, and again, that's very usable still. Nothing wrong with that at all. Good. So, the experiment has worked so far. I know I can leave these paints for at least two days without any issues. Alright, so I'm going to use my wet palettes on these figures. And what I've chosen to paint today are these. Well, I think they're actually billed as Piranha Men. But to me, that's a very nice representation of a deep one. And I bought these at Dragon Meat in London at the beginning of December from a company called Modular Worlds who are based in Newquay in Cornwall. And they, they did a range of sort of D&D &D and, and similar type figures. And I thought these in particular were very striking. The whole range was good actually, so I do recommend them. I'll put the link up in the notes below. Now when I painted my zombies up last week, I tried the slap chop method. Didn't particularly turn out very well which was really down to how I was using the paints. Now that I've got my wet palettes, and now that I've got some acrylic flow medium, I'm gonna give the slap chop another go. This time, hopefully with this and the palettes, I can get a much thinner, more translucent coat that will really bring that uh, base undercoat through. So that's the first thing to do then. I've already got the black undercoat. I'm gonna give these a dry brush in gray then another dry brush in white to really bring out that contrast base coat uh, and then we can get into our <laughs> which part is the slap and which part is the chop I'm not really sure like I said before I'm not quite sure where that name came from but there we go that's what we're using so I blue tack my figures onto the spice jars for easy handling and ironically enough having made the wet palettes I'm not actually <laughs> going to use them for this bit because I'm dry brushing of course so I want a very dry paint. I'm using a makeup brush. And I remember from last time from doing the zombies that less is more. You actually need very little paint on the brush for the dry brushing. So I'm just going to put some of that into a plastic palette and dip the brush in and then work it onto some kitchen towel to take any excess paint off. And then I'll make a start. Oh, the other thing today in terms of listening, I'm listening to a podcast again today. And it's by the good friends of Jackson Elias, which is a Call of Cthulhu RPG and horror gaming podcast. And they also cover horror fiction and films and so on. One of the best Lovecraft podcasts out there. And fittingly enough, at the moment, they're running through Lovecraft's, well, probably one of his most popular stories, I would say, The Shadow Over Innsmouth, which has lots of lovely descriptions of deep ones in it. So very suitable listening. Anyway, we're going to get the Tamiya Grey cracked open and we shall make a start. Mm -hmm. 
So that's my grey and white highlighting done. Bit of an accident on this one. The figure actually broke at the foot there. Uh, I just put a bit too much pressure on. So I'll just blue tack that on for the moment and I'll fix that later on. And you might have noticed I've already put some scatter on the base of this one. That was purely because I had some left over from doing the zombies. Uh, that might have been a bit of a mistake because I've got to clean the feet off in order to paint them now. But that's an easy fix. Right, so that's stage one done. Now we're going to move on to the main colours. Now, Lovecraft often gets a bit of a bad rap for saying things are indescribable and never really going into much detail on his, his monsters, his creations. But that's not really the case. And we particularly see this in Shadow Over Innsmouth, where we get a very full-on description of the horde of deep ones that are chasing the protagonist. And they're described as a greyish green, mostly in colour, with bulbous, unblinking eyes and pale fish bellies. So, we're going to go for a mixture of uh, Napoleon Green from Andrea Colours. We've got Ghostly Vapours from my Army Painters D&D &D range. Uh, from that range we've also got Ghoul Grey. And also I thought I'd try it mixing in a little bit of silver because what I want to get is the effect of these skins, these hides being scales, being fishy. So I want that sort of slightly reflective glittery thing going on. So now is where I get my wet palettes out and I'm going to start mixing all these things in together. And what I'm looking for is a more translucent, almost wash-like effect for these main colours now. So that's my base colour done and I think the slap chop effect has worked a little better on this than last time. I think it's probably still not as good as using a, a contrast paint uh, and of course that's also down to me not really getting the consistency of my paint correct. Uh, it, could, it could probably do with being a little bit thinner and translucent still but nonetheless that sort of undershading is showing through now on that so that's good. Okay, so the next thing to do is put in detail. That's going to be the eyes, the teeth, the claws, etc. We'll put some washes on top of that. And then to finish off, we'll go over and add some highlights. then that's four deep ones finished um, I'm not sure what the collective noun is for deep ones a shoal <laughs> I don't know what do you think what do you think is the best term for that anyway that's those done and that's just a couple of hours work so I'm pleased with those I think the, the slap chop worked better this time but it's still not the full effect but I suspect that's down to my technique and also as I said using thinned paints rather than the proper contrast paints so maybe I'll get some of those in the future but for now I'm really happy with these I just need to tidy the bases up a bit and then give them a coat of varnish and they're ready for the table there we are then that's another batch of my fantasy figures finished I think the next lot I'm going to turn to 
are the Barbarians, those metal 28mm Barbarians that I bought in uh, Leeds. Got them up at Leeds from Battlezone Miniatures. And, as chance would have it, I got in touch with Battlezone Miniatures because they're not that far from me, only about 20 miles away, and plans are afoot to organise a visit. So, I'll be going there, chatting to the owner, looking at how the figures are sculpted and how the figures are made. So, do keep an eye out for that coming up in the near future. Alright, thanks for watching again. As always, please like, share and subscribe. And also, as always, I welcome your comments, suggestions, <laughs> questions, bars of chocolate, anything like that, feel free to send in. Take care.